Welcome back to New Rockstars. It's Eric Voss and Philip Molina here with bite-sized questions that you guys sent into us. Philip is gonna take these, and these are just as important as Hulk's clapping power. No less important. Are you okay. trying to make me feel better <laughs> about this? At Major Danger Eleven asked, "Why did Janet Van Dyne age in the quantum realm when Scott Lang stayed roughly the same age?" Paul Rudd here, actor and certified young person. Okay, so, so a lot of people brought this up as a plot hole, actually. They're like, how come Janet says specifically, I'm not the same woman I was 30 years ago, and she looks 30 years old, still mm. tight, oh, yeah. but 30 years older. Uh -huh. uh, she got the silver streaks, and then when Scott Lang goes in, he has skipped five years, yeah. and it's been a matter of minutes for Still him. very much clueless, Paul Rudd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like he doesn't age. What's most likely the answer in the canon is just based on the concept of the time vortex. Right. She specifically says, look out for time vortices, essentially. Right at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And don't get sucked into a time vortex. We won't be able to save you. We do know that that's setting up Endgame. The creators of the film have confirmed that that is the difference of the experience that Scott Lang does. He goes in there and he does go through a time vortex, even though they didn't show it to us. They're like, yeah, everybody got that, right? I don't know that everybody did get that, but he went through a time vortex, she did not. Uh -huh. He skipped ahead five years, she did not. She stayed there 30 years. But I actually think that there's a slightly more interesting element to this question, where if you think about the fact that Janet Van Dyne in the quantum realm clearly lived a life in there, right? Yeah. Her clothes are developed in a way where she clearly has had access to a sewing machine or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but she also <laughs> was involved in the civilization, it kind of sounds like. We multiple times pointed out that city in the quantum realm. Yeah. Was, under my understanding, I could imagine this city is created in a space in the quantum realm where time is kind of secure within this bubble. Oh. It's a safe place to house her for people to live and, and live normally outside of this bubble. Now you're in the torrential storm of the quantum realm sure. where, you know, the different sizes you are create that relativity in time that Einstein theorized. Mm. Any other area of the quantum realm also might put you through time at a different speed than a nice, secure, safe space. Uh, place like, like that, that city. That's interesting. Yeah. So outside of the city, there are these like holes, basically, right. that these ditches that you can fall into that suck you through time. Right. And aside from those holes, even just in general, the quantum realm is unstable in terms of yeah. a linear timeline. Okay. I, I like that answer. At Reef underscore 98 said, how does Arthur Fleck fire eight shots from his gun without reloading? And this is in Joker. Yeah, I remember this scene. Yeah. Mistake. <laughs> it's a mistake. Answer. No, it's not my full answer, actually. So I did look into it anyway. I mean, probably a mistake, right? Because we see this in films all the yeah, time. Yeah, like Walking People... Dead, Rick, is just from that pipe. Endless. Endless. Yeah. yeah, endless bullets. There is one interesting thing about this film. Maybe it's not a mistake. So the gun he uses is a Colt Detective Special, the third generation of that gun. Absolutely is a six-shot gun. Mm -hmm. Because so yeah, there are some revolvers that, that fire can eight, hold, yeah, can but hold not eight. this one. People theorize maybe he was using an eight uh, shot one. No, it specifically should only be six. That could be the mistake, or it could be just one more clue that this sequence might be imagined. We do know that this is some very large spectacle event that the news is covering to an extent where everyone wants to know who's killed these guys. It's the whole Thomas Wayne, uh, the fact that he actually comes off as a villain is because he's sympathizing with kind of the wrong side of the class warfare that's right, happening right, right. in this moment. And we do know that Joker's egomania is, is putting him at the center of things, right? Mm -hmm. he, he imagines he goes on Murray's show and he's gonna be brought down from the audience and he's gonna be the star of the thing. The idea that he would be watching something like this on the news and imagine that, well, what if it was me that killed these guys, which, is one of the scenes that is not confirmed actually 100% that he was the one that, that killed them, then that would make sense that he actually doesn't understand guns well enough to know how many shots they would have. He specifically, when he's given the gun earlier, he says that he's supposed to stay away from those things. Yeah. He clearly has been found to have uh, mental issues. It wouldn't be surprising if there is some sort of better background check situation in mm -hmm. uh, Gotham than in the real world, where if you are established to be someone of a certain uh, mental state, you're not allowed to yeah, have Yeah, they those have red guns. flag laws. There, exactly. Yeah. Then he would not have experience with these guns. So his guess is, I don't know, maybe he has eight shots, maybe he has endless sure, shots. Sure, sure. It's like Fight Club, like he's applying his own understanding of how right. violence works to his own life, his imagined life. And then you can still even use this argument, even if he was the guy that killed those guys, 
then maybe just two, the last two shots weren't real. Yeah, it's like, like he walked up to it and plugged it point yeah. blank range a couple more times. Right, so just those extra like cool shots or something, maybe those weren't real, but probably just a mistake. Probably just a mistake, yeah. We have a question from Caleb Tigler. In the Infinity War opening scene, why does Heimdall use the Bifrost to save Hulk instead of Thor? Okay, so this question actually was my favorite one of this batch. There's kind of a straightforward answer and then there's a interesting comics uh, lore answer. The most straightforward version of this is that in this moment, the Asgardians and what's left of them are there. Heimdall is there, Hulk is there, and Thanos and his peeps are there. In this moment, Heimdall decides, I'm gonna send Hulk to Earth as a, as a warning, basically. Now, the most simple logic you can understand here is why would he send Thor if Thor is the leader and guardian of the Asgardians, and here's the potentially the final moment of the mm -hmm. Asgardians. You don't take away the warrior who's there to defend the Asgardians mm -hmm. and send him to Earth, and now they're like, great, Hulk is here who doesn't give a shit about us. Mm -hmm. If you just think of it as simply as that, Thor is an Asgardian, he protects Asgardians. He goes down with the ship. Basically, yeah. and then Hulk is an Earthling, send him oh, to Earth, right, gotcha. of, of okay. all those people. So that's the easiest logic yeah. to understand. Except, this is what I was thinking was really interesting about it. You also have to remember in that moment, they're not on Asgard. They're not using the traditional Bifrost Bridge situation, this room that is established that they've used multiple times in the MCU. Mm -hmm. In the comics, the Bifrost Bridge is a big deal to channel that, yeah. and it uses that dark magic. The dark magic actually is a destructive force that is very hard to wield. In the comics, when you send someone through it, you actually might kill them. It's, it's oh. even Thor, it's very scary when you send him send okay. that way. MCU hasn't really done it that way, except this is now not in that controlled space where they've designed it to potentially even let, you know, Rocket Raccoon uses it at one uh -huh. point. So it probably is like yeah. pretty safe. When Heimdall straight up says, All Father, uh, you know, send the dark magic through me one last time. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about the raw energy of this thing. Uh. In this version, it actually might be just like the comic version where he says that exact same phrase, there's not a lot of in entities that can withstand that, so Heimdall himself can, uh, though maybe it is killing him and he knows he's gonna die anyway, so it's right. fine. Hulk is one of the few creatures that can probably also oh, survive this straight up dark magic flowing right through him and sending him down. Interesting, so it's the difference of using a regulated microwave in your kitchen versus using plutonium to cook your you microwave dinner. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, it works great, but uh, I do have this tail now and <laughs> it's pretty great. And you're riddled with tumors. <laughs> great, thank you so much for yep. sending your questions, folks, and uh, keep sending those questions at Big Question. <laughs> and you can follow us on social media at EA Voss, at Philip Molina, and you can follow New Rockstars at New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next week. Bye-bye.